So today, what are the things that we will be looking at? We're looking at 10 easy ways in which you can forecast industry-based model. I'll be starting from what we call drivers in financial modeling. Financial modeling it is all about drivers and that serve as a basis for calculating our historical trend, which will then be used for forecasting. Now, let me even use the literary meaning of what we call driver. Everyone of you, when you hear the word driver, a driver can be said to be an individual who sits behind the wheel and controls the movement of a vehicle, or you call it a car, from one place to the other. Similarly, financial modeling, if you want to grow your line item in your financial statement, there is a need for you to identify driver for such line item and this will lead us to we identifying drivers for the line item in our income statements and before you say a driver for a particular line item is this there's a need for you to ask what will cause this line item to happen hence drivers in financial modeling can be said to be a cause and effect now for example trade receivables if you say if there is no sales on credit, that implies that you cannot have trade receivables, right? It is because you buy something on credit. That is, I mean, you sell something on credit. That is why you have trade receivables. And as such, you can set your sales as a driver for your trade receivables. Although there are some certain macroeconomic factors that you may need to also factor in as well. However, you can only factor this in when you have sufficient information about the firm. Talk about you breaking down the cost, their expenses, their price and quantity. Now with the understanding of this, we then proceed to see 10 different method that you can use to forecast your line item, having identified the driver. And one thing that usually waste mode last time is getting accurate and reliable assumptions for their model. Well, this is necessary, but it is not sufficient because model is a representation of reality and not a reality in itself. We cannot be 100% accurate of what we happen tomorrow and um, there is a saying that states no one knows tomorrow all we're just trying to do is to mirror what we happen in the full show today we'll take a look at um, different method that can help us to build at least 80 percent realistic assumptions in your model where i'll be demonstrating that but before we go into the demonstration let's get started to what we we'll call drivers in financial modeling as i said earlier the financial modeling is all about drivers and when you say driver we mean what can serve as the basis to grow or forecast our line item so that if you want to say you want to forecast this particular line item in your financial statement you can use it as the basis to forecast that particular line item and this will lead us to identifying drivers in our financial statement. Uh, remember that before you can say that you are setting this particular line item as a driver for another line item, you need to ask, what is the cause? What will call this line item to happen? What are the components of this line item? What can I use to grow this line item? Or say, what can be set as a basis for forecasting or predicting the future trend of this line item now let's try to identify one of these line item one after the other and i'll be starting from revenue revenue is the same thing as sales right so when you say revenue it's also the same thing as sales but then let me ask us when you hear of revenue what do you think can cause revenue to happen what are the components of revenue you can have your price you can have your quantity Capacity as well, you can set it to be the driver of your revenue. Demand, growth, and competition. But then, you know, there are some limitations to some of these bases. Number one, when you look at the price and quantity, you may not have the information as to what your price will be or what the quantity will be, right? So in such a situation that you don't have access to the price and the quantity, right? You just make use of growth. You make use of 
growth rate. And then capacity as well can also be set as a basis of predicting your revenue. Now take for example, a manufacturing firm that has a manufacturing plant. Now the quantity that they can produce, it's limited to that their capacity. It tends to, to, to bring out a constraint, right? So they, they will be limited to what they can actually produce. Also, Demand as well can be set to be a driver for your revenue. And when you talk of demand, you are talking about the willingness and the ability of people to buy your product, right? That is the people who are ready and they are willing to buy your product at a particular period of time. Then we go to competition as well. Competition can also be set as a driver for our revenue. Now let's talk about cost of good sold. Cost of good sold. What is the fixed cost? What is the cost per unit? You can also make use of their variable cost. But one thing that I want us to also note is that revenue is more like the umbrella of every business, which means that Almost all the line item that you have in your income statements can be set as a percentage of your revenue. Where you can break down the cost of the firm, you have information as to their cost, right? What is their cost per unit? You can make use of what? Their fixed cost and then the variable cost. But in a situation whereby you do not have information about their cost, their cost per unit, all you just need to do is to set it as a driver for of your what of your revenue so revenue will be the driver for your cost of sales inflation as well can also be factored in because i mean inflation we say that uh, that is persistent rise in the price of goods and then services and that can affect your cost of sales as well and that is in terms of a time value of money now let's talk about sg and a when you say sg and a that is selling general and administrative expenses you can also call it your operational expenses what do you think can be the driver for our selling general and administrative expenses so also we can also make use of our revenue remember i told us that you can set now that revenue is more like the umbrella of the business and then almost all the line item that you have in your income statement can be set as a percentage of your revenue and where you can list out all the costs you have all their operational costs and everything then definitely you can also make use of a uh, cost then inflation as well to factor in time value of uh, money you can also consider competition and expansion you know when a firm is trying to expand definitely the expenses the operational expenses is also going to what to increase so it's expected that the operational expenses is going to increase so let's take a look at inflation if you want to i mean depreciation rather so if you want to forecast your depreciation you need to ask what are those things that we make you to have depreciation what are those things that will make you to have depreciation right so number one is that that firm must have assets there should be what ppe property plant and equipment then you can also consider the rates of depreciation right so some firm they tend to say okay they are going to be depreciating their assets over the years at the rate of 10 percent so i might say okay it's 15 percent annually as the case may be you can also consider the lifespan of the asset as well now let's take a look at the net finance cost when you hear net finance cost that is the difference between your finance income and um, your finance cost so when you look at the difference between your finance income and your finance cost you have the net finance cost and uh, you will need to ask that what are they using to finance their business do they obtain loan do they have overdrafts what is the interest rate the cash in the business and then you talk of the investment that they have and what is the interest income on invest 
meant. And um, before we now go to our demo, let me talk about tax as well, right? So tax for tax, you need to consider the profit before tax as well as the rate of tax. Now let's now demonstrate or 10 different ways in which you can focus some of the line item in our financial statements. And um, the first one that I'll be talking about is the straight line method. Is a straight line method, or call it the constant growth method. This method is the simplest and the most common method of incorporating assumptions into your model. And it is done by using a constant rate, right? When you're looking using growth rate or percent, so you make yourself a constant rate. And if it is in terms of value, that means that you're making you trend. Now, I know that you will observe something. You should see something here. You will notice that there's more or less a consistent growth across the year. In 2017, they had 37.9%. 2018, you can see 39.6%, although there is a reduction to, in 2019 to 38.9. In 2020, you have 39.3%. And in 2021, you have 43%. 0.8%. One thing that I want you to observe there is that there is a bit of consistency. So for you to make use of that constant uh, growth, or you call it the straight line method, you must look at the historical performance of the firm. See if there's a consistent growth rate. Therefore, if you now want to focus making use of uh, this method, you will have a constant trend across the years. Let's even check the average performance of the firm in the five years. So let me just uh, highlight this and see the average performance of the firm across the years. Now, when you go to your status bar, when you go to your status bar, when you come down here, you see your, my status bar and you see the average performance of the firm across the five years, they have 39.9%, more like 40%. So if you now want to predict what your cost of sales is going to be across the next five years, you can then see that it is what? It is 39.9%. So let me come here and type 39.9%. And I can just copy this to the right for my five years. Now, let's make use of this to forecast. Let's make use of this to forecast. So if you want to forecast your cost of sales, that will be equal to, that will be equals to, you can either select your revenue, multiply by the cost of sales growth. Then I press enter and I will I select this I like to the right and press Control R, and you see that automatically it's fill out for the five years. So, so one thing about a fast standard is that you should have a consistent structure in your model, right? So once you have a consistent structure in your model, you can easily highlight to the right, and then you it will fill out automatically. Second one that we'll be looking at today is what we we'll call the moving or we call it the rolling average. The moving or the rolling average is another method that you can use to predict the future trend of a business. And it is mostly applied to a matured firm as well. There's a need for you to also check their historical performance. You need to observe that there is a consistent growth, right? And so doing, you can forecast based on the average performance of the firm over a specific period of time. And uh, this method is often applied to line items that are subject to seasonal va variation. Talk of your inventory, right? So let's try to do this. So I'll be taking a look at two-year moving average as well as three-year moving average. But well, then let's start from the assumption of two-year moving average, two years moving average, two years moving average. So now let's calculate the, let's take a look at their historical trend first. Let's look at their historical trend. That will be my cost of sales divided by my revenue. I press enter. Then remember, because I have a consistent layout in my model, I can always copy to the 
right you also observed here that there is consistency in their growth margin there's consistency in the growth margin now even i want to use the moving average remember that this is two year moving average which implies that you need to look at two years across the forecast period two years across the forecast period and the uh function that you use in excel is called average so you can just say equals to average equals to average and remember you have to select two years you have to select two years then i close my bracket i press enter then i can always highlight to the right and press ctrl r now let's take a look at what we have in 2023 so you see that i'm having for two years and then if i come to 2026 i also have for two years but one thing is that you should not perform calculation in your assumption so you just need to copy this copy this and now paste a special value copy it and paste a special value now let's make a use of, of this assumption to forecast let's make a use of this assumption to forecast so that will be equal to that will be equals to my revenue multiplied by my cost of sales and i press enter and i can always do this to see what my gross profit is going to be for the period now with the understanding of the two-year moving average let's take a look at the three-year moving average let's take a look at the three-year moving average now just the way we've done for the two-year moving average let's check the historical trend let's try to look at the historical trend and you also observe that they have a consistent trend right in their historical period now when you want to forecast remember that this is three years so instead of selecting two years that we did in the two year moving average you are going to make use of what three years yes so you're going to make use of three years so that will be equals to average equals to average now remember we are selecting three years i close my brackets and i press enter now let's that what will be the future trend remember there should not be formula in your input um, what you use for your future trend so let's just copy and paste a special value having done that then we can then use that to forecast but one thing i want you to observe here when you look at my formula bar when you look at my formula bar you see that i have huge decimal uh you, you call it decimal places right it's it's quite huge i have 40 point c c c c something seven percent now there's a way in which you can round this so now let's try to round it to let's say maybe one or two decimal places and for you to do that you make it of a function in excel that is called round so here we now be combining two different functions together we'll be combining round and average will be combining round and average so let me delete what i have here before let me just delete what i have here and i will say equals to round average okay. equals to round average and how many years are we looking at three years three years so i'll close my brackets for the first argument and then how many decimal places am i looking at so if it is one you type one I mean you press one if it is two you press two as the case may be so let's just use two and then I close my bracket and i press enter now i can just copy to the right remember i need to copy and paste a special value i need to copy and paste a special value now you now see that okay it has even rounded it to 41 percent for us now let's go take a look at what will be the cost of sales for 2022 that will be equal to my revenue multiplied by my cost of sales and i'll say this then i'll copy to the right and then press ctrl r then we can then look compare that with what i have for my two-year moving average as well as the three-year moving average you can see this uh, here in 2022 i have 875.1 whereas in 2023 
23.43 year moving average i have 863.5 let's go to the third method and the third method is what i call the maximum of historical the maximum of historical and this is referred to as the optimist method of predicting the future trend of a business trend and in doing this for our SGNA, in a situation whereby you do not have information as to the breakdown of their operational expenses you just set it as a percentage of your revenue so this will be equal to remember make sure that you are selecting the appropriate cell that will be sd and a divided by my revenue and i'll press enter then let me just do this for the five years so having done this remember that what i want to do is that i want to check the maximum of the historical trend i'm trying to look for the maximum in the average performance of the firm between 2017 and 2021 and the function in excel that you can use for that is what we call max max so that will be equal to max then let's try to look at the five years i'll use my bracket and press enter you see that it's picking the maximum value for me so i can just copy the first one it's a special value before copying to the right Having done that, let us use it to forecast. Forecast my selling general and administrative expenses. That will be equal to my revenue multiplied by my SGNE. I press enter, then I can copy this to the right to get for the other years. Now, the fourth one that I will be looking at is the minimum of the historical trend. This is more like the opposite of the maximum of historical method of forecasting and then this method is referred to as the conservative method of determining the future trend of the business and it is done by checking the minimum rate across the historical trend so you also look at the historical trend of the of the business and then you make use of the minimum rates make use of the minimum rates so that will be equal to let's take a like this that will be equal to my s journey divided by my revenue you can even do this right let me just do it at once but i highlight all of this i will say equal to my s journey divided by my revenue and i want everything to fill out at once i'll just press my control and enter you see everything we fill out at once now remember what they want to do we want to make use of minimum of historical let me ask us what formula in excel can we use to find minimum what formula in excel can we use to find minimum so i can just highlight the right i will say equal to mean you see mean then i will select the five year period i'll close the bracket and i'll press my control enter then remember i'll just copy and paste a special value copy and paste a special value then let's make use of this to forecast let's make use of this to forecast that will be equal to my revenue multiply by the sgn then i'll press enter and i can just select this and i like to the right the fifth method that i'll be sharing with us is what we call the last historical year the last historical year and the last historical year uh we analysts we believe that the last historical year give the latest updates about the fame and as a result we often make use of it as a way of forecasting the full short trend of the business and this method is used mainly for our balance sheet line item and then you must also notice that they have a consistent trend over their historical year so what this method makes use of is the last historical year to predict the full short trend of the business so now with this now let me ask us what is my last historical year okay so let's continue so i have 150 i have 150 right so i can just align this to the right and press ctrl r and then um, for my share capital that means that for my share thank you very much daniel that means that for my share capital that will be equal to 
this so i can align to the right and then press ctrl r right so you must notice that they have a consistent trend and the sixth one that we will be looking at is what we call the forecasted predict the future trend of the business line item along a linear or you call it a straight line trend before or say by using their existing value and this method is good for fame that has series of data you say for example they record a revenue on a daily basis or on a monthly basis as the case may be so for this now i they record it on a monthly basis you can see for january and then you can also see for february now if they now want to predict for okay what is going to be their sales in march right so let's say they want to predict what is going to be their sales in march let's say third of march 2022 and what is the model should we just say to yes uh, So let's say that is the model for that particular that they sold in that particular date. Now let's look at what would be the revenue for the third of uh, March 2022. And the method that I'll be using is what we we'll call the forecasted linear. So when you come to your formulas, when you come to your formulas, you have a lot of functions and all of that. You come down and then you come to where you have statistical. When you have statistical, you can always scroll down. You will see forecast ETS, forecast ETS, uh, forecast ETS seasonality and all of that. Then you come to forecast linear you can always over around this function to know what they are for but because of our time let me just go straight to the forecast linear and that forecast linear is used to calculate or predict a future value along a linear trend by using the existing value so now let's demonstrate this let me demonstrate this that to be equal to just type forecasted linear forecasted linear and after typing forecasted linear it will ask you that what is your s my x is the date that is the trade dates that is the trade date and then what is my y that is my revenue that's my revenue for the period that's my revenue and uh, my known x that is the trade date from 1st of january to 27 of february i will close my bracket and press enter now it has predicted that in on the 3rd of march then i can uh, my revenue is going to be three million one hundred fifty thousand two hundred fifty point seven right now we can also incorporate this in our model as well we can also incorporate it in, in your model right you can also incorporate it in your model let's say for example you're looking at your revenue uh year on year growth so let's just say equal to my forecasts Forecasted linear, forecasted linear, forecasted linear, and then what is my S? What is my S? Now, my S that I'm looking for is what is the year, which is 2022, and then what is my known Y? My known Y is this, and uh, my known S is 2017 to 2021. I can close the bracket and I will press enter. Now it has forecasted that my year on year growth rate for 2022 is going to be 11.9%. I can also drag this to the right to see for the other year. So now let's take a use of, let's make use of this to forecast what our revenue is going to be. So that will be equals to for your revenue, you make use of the growth formula, which is your last year ending balance multiplied by open the bracket one plus one plus the growth rate then you close your bracket and press enter i can always drag this to the right and then press my control r the next one that i'll be looking at is what i'll call trend is what i call trend and for the trend as well it's also another uh function in excel right it's also another function in excel that you use to forecast and um, let's just use the same thing that we used the other time um, let's say I'm looking for the third of March 2022 and then let's say that the model is um, 450 4500p and then what will now be my revenue so let's type equal to trend
equals to train and that train will return numbers in a linear train matching known data points using the least square method so i'll press equal to now what is my known y's my known y's are these these are my known y's that is my known y and then what is my known x my known x is this then i'll press my my comma then what is my new x which is this now press my command then i can press zero close my bracket and press enter now you see that it's also focusing that i'm going to have 3.1 let's compare to the previous one that told me that i was going to have 3.150 and this as well is saying that i'm also going to have 3.13 now you can also make use of it in a uh, model as well so we can also come here and do the same thing that will be equal to remember what function are we using train you are using train so that is train what is my known y my known y are this then what is my known x my known x is this and then my new x which is the year that i'm looking for then i press zero press enter and i can just drag this to the right and press Control R. Having done that, let's make use of it to forecast our revenue. That will be equal to the last year adding period multiplied by open bracket one plus the growth rate. Close the bracket, press Enter, and I can drag this to the right and press my Control R. So I press my Control R. The eighth method that we'll be looking at is what we call the linear regression. The linear regression, and this involves the make the use of uh, graph so it's involved the use of graph so because of our time let me just deal with the income statement part because of our time so now let me create um, a blank sign and call my chart design and select data what is my data range so my data range is this this is my data range and um, for my horizontal then i can just select this I can select this and then i'll press ok i'll also select okay now with this remember we are making use of the linear regression for some of us as maybe you've studied economics or you've done something like statistics you know what they call the linear equation so for me to get the linear equation i'll just select this plus sign to see my chart element then i'll select my trend line having selected my trend line over to where you have this pointer click on it and click on more options click on more options when you click on more option you see something like format trend you see something like format trend and then you can come down to where you have display equation on chart display equation on chart now i can see my equation I can see my equation so let me just try to also enlarge this that everyone of us will be able to see that um, okay so let me make it this um let me bring it to where we can see it clearly all right you can also look at um, let's see the r square as well you can see the r square come here you can also display the r square there i have the r square there and all of that but because of time let's just proceed and do our forecast now what we're going to do here is this you know for my y the equation now is y is equals to minus 0 0.0051 plus 0.1497 so all i need to do is to come here i'll type my equal to what is the first thing minus 0 0.0051 multiply by let me see my multiply by what is my x the x will be five right that is for the five year that is for the five year let you can also put this into bracket we need to you can just put that into bracket and then come here and say plus plus uh is zero point one four nine seven and you press enter and it's going to give you what the uh, what you can use as a as your forecast right so i can also drag to the right or uh, you just copy and then paste a special value and then we can use that to forecast having done that we can always delete this let me just move this here and then use it to forecast that will be equal to my last historical year multiplied by open bracket one plus the growth rate close my 
in bracket and then press enter and i can always drag this to the right now the ninth one that we'll be looking at today before we go is the forecast sheet the forecast sheet and for the forecast sheet you there's something in excel when you come to your data when you come to your data and you move down in your ribbon you see what we call the forecast sheet and this one is going to create a new worksheet to predict your future train is going to uh create a new worksheet to predict your official train so you're going to notice something here but now let me just select my let me just select my data let me select my data first um, let me select my data and then i go back to data go back to data and then i click on forecast sheet and then you see that it has forecasted it for me right and then it will ask me that what is the forecast end what is my forecast end my forecast end is 2026 my forecast end is 2026 and then you can also click on option you can click on option where you want the forecast start period you can always select the forecast start period if you want to do it automatically you can always do that but then let's just proceed uh you can always uh, explore this after the webinar so let's click on create and you notice that it has created it for me right it has created it for me so i can always highlight this from 2022 let me just copy copy it come back to the worksheet that i am i want to type it here now you know i've selected it on a column and i want to change it to horizontal so what i can do is just to make it of transpose so i will just say alt esv okay so let me copy that again back here then i want to paste here and then i want to paste these values and you now create select transpose and i press enter i'll press enter and then we can always use that to forecast so that will be equal to that will be equal to my last year uh historical period multiplied by open bracket one plus this particular year close bracket i'll press enter then we can I like to the right and press control r and before we go to our question and answer period let's look at the last one and the last one that i'll be talking about today is the compound annual growth rate method i call it cagr method and um, this method indicates the growth rate over multiple time period right over the multiple time period and the one thing about this um, compound annual growth rate is that it is not prone to volatility unlike the moving or the rolling average you can make use of it to calculate your capest you can make use of it to calculate your revenue right and uh, well that's just that's just about it um, let's just calculate do that let's just let's just make calculate the compound annual growth rate uh it has a formula but then it's not something really really serious and it's something that you you can always understand so what you just need to do is to say equal to what is the last value let me select the last value or should i just put it into bracket let me put it this into bracket so let's say the last period let's say the last period divided by the first period divided by the first period then i can close my bracket raised to the power of open under bracket then one divided by one thing that you also need to note here is that you know my year will not be will not start counting from 2017 so i'll just for my 2018 then that will be year one 2019 what will be year two period three and then period four so i will divide by four close the bracket and i will now say minus one minus one and i'll press enter i'll press enter and uh I can use this to forecast as well. I'll just say equal to my last year and the period multiplied by open bracket one plus the growth rate, close bracket and press enter. So either way, you can just align this to the right and then you also do same for this. You also do same for this, right? So that's all about it on 10 different ways in which you can forecast industry. Peace model.